First thing I'm going to do is just put down the kickstand. And that's the kickstand. From there, we need to um, just pull the chains. And you don't have to use a tool for this or anything. You just use your hand. You just kind of pull it to the side a little bit and pedal it carefully there. And then that chain is off. Now this chain. Same, same deal here. Just push it to the side. Back pedal a little bit. And that chain is off. It can come off up here too. There it is. So we have two different chains. One, one that's a little longer and one that's a little shorter. The longer one always stays with this crank set. So next up is I'm going to break these guys loose. These are the couplings. So I just put the lock ring, the small side of the lock ring wrench on the small coupling. That is loose. Now the larger side of the cup of the coupling or the lock ring wrench on the larger coupling. And just like so. So now I'm ready to go ahead and take this bike in half. So uh, I'm not quite ready for that. <laughs> Can't forget to do the cables first. So come around here, Mike. Let's show them the actual cable splitters. Take a close up of that cable splitter. To disconnect the cables, you want to turn these little guys, and you turn the side that doesn't have these little lock bolts in it. This side turns freely. If you turn this side, what happens is you're just winding up the cable and it wants to wind itself back, as you can see that. So you want to turn this side, turns freely. There is the brake cable. Underneath here is the drag brake cable. And we try to color code these. So you've got a shifter cable that's silver. That's a shifter cable, the drag brake cable is black, and the other shifter cable. So you've got a black and a silver shift cable, and then a drag brake cable by itself. So now we're ready to take the bike in half. So that coupling is undone. Usually nice to have somebody holding the front of the bike for you, but you can, you know, do it like so. And when you release this second coupling, the weight of the bike will kind of tip the bike back there, but it'll still hold itself up. So, set this guy aside, grab the middle piece, and have it sitting over here. So all we're going to do is just line these up first. Takes a little bit of a, there's that one. Just kind of get that guy started just a little bit and bring this guy up and he's in. No cross threading. There we go. Got it. Should be able to tighten these, but you turn these by hand for most of it there, so there, that. All right, so there's that, and now this will, the weight will set that back down. Now we'll put the front onto this. Yeah, I just have someone hold the back of the bike up like Mike's doing there. And then we have to line these up. Let it come down a little bit. There's that. Then we get this one started. Okay. Then we get this one started. All right. So now we can tighten these couplings up. That is an important part. So one. Two. <laughs> then I usually suggest that after you ride for a little bit, you just check the couplings again because uh, even if you got them tight, once you ride a little bit, sometimes things will settle a little bit more and then you can get them one final little turn. 
So then we can just start hooking back up the cables. And these go back together, just like they came apart. You turn the side without the set pins in it. There's that one. Here's this one. There it goes. Okay, that's the handbrake. So follow this one. That is the drag brake. It's gonna hook in right like so. I'm uh, I'm gonna try to hook. I'm putting it back into a tandem, and I'm trying to get this cable hooked up. And I'm wondering why won't it reach? It's just too tight. You need to kind of look back and see. Sometimes these things slip out of their little fittings. So see how that goes inside there. We want that to be seated in there. And it can be down here. It can be up there. It could be here. Or sometimes they come completely out when you have the bike apart. So it might be out like that. And you go to hook it up and it's it's still really loose. And you're wondering, well, why is that still loose like that? It's because and you need to get that ferrule. The aluminum ferrule goes on there. So we're going to unhook it again, put it back up in. And that can happen on any of the cables. But it's easy just to kind of check those if, if you're having trouble. And uh, that's that. I think we're done. Okay, then the silver shift cable goes to the silver shift cable. Black shift cable to black shift cable. And then the same back here. And the silver one is last. Make sure nothing's tangled up there. So it's not. So all right. There's that part. Now before I do anything else, I usually just check that brake. Make sure it works. It does. And that works. The shifting works fine. So. We're on to putting the chains on. The longer chain that I took off first is going to go on the front. Shorter chain on the back. These little, when you've got a chain that has one of these funny things, you have to line up these little. It's been sitting around for a while, so now you've got these little loops to deal with. You have to get them near each other for them to come apart. <laughs> you gotta get that near the other one. Work them to each other. Come on. There we go. No. Boy, if all else fails, you can take the chain apart at this link. <laughs> but, boy, I had it. Shouldn't be necessary. Had it for a second. There we go. It is. It shouldn't be necessary, but sometimes you you just do it because your brain tells you to. There we go. And there. Now I got it. Okay. Finally. Nicely organized chain. <laughs> well, if it's sitting around for a while, sometimes it's easier. There is a quick link on these right here. You can take a pair of pliers and just kind of pop it loose, and then straighten it out and put it back together. But. Um, didn't need to this time. So this, since it's on the inside here, I'm going to put it on the inside over here. And the way you line these up, is you, I just line this this up here with the seat tube, and then I turn this crank tail where it's lined up with the seat tube. And that way, when you start the chain, you just kind of watch and make sure that you're starting it on a link, on a tooth that keeps them lined up. Okay. So I'm starting the chain on here, and it's just like a bike when you're a kid. There you go. That chain is on. 
let's put this chain on. This is the back chain. Back chain. Oh. So back chain goes on. Just make sure you're you're on here. It is. And this one you don't have to line anything up. It's just easier if you have the crank arm out of your way. So just get that started, just like the bike when you were a kid, and you just turn that until it goes. Dink. So now that chain's on. This chain's on. These are chained together. Last but not least is this chain to that. Now, just because of differences in uh, lengths of everything, this you'll have to loosen this eccentric to do this final chain. So what we do, you need a four millimeter wrench, and what you do is you pop that loose, but it's not loose yet. You keep turning it backwards until it feels like it's tightening up again. See, it's tightening up again. And then now it's, now it's loose when it, when it loosens back up. So now it's, now it's nice and loose again. So that means that I can use my tool that we included here just to turn this. And so what I do is I turn that to the loosest spot, which, which is the bottom bracket as far to the back of the bike as we can go. And then we'll step around and put the chain on. Outside. Now let's line these crank arms up. Line that one up with the seat tube just like I did the others. Line this one up with the seat tube. Just kind of pick which link makes it line up and then just put this on. Chain's loose. And now we're going to tighten it. So here we go. Have the tool here. Just put it in any of these holes here that it lines up with. And then just... And it's tight. So now you put the wrench back in and tighten it up until... That's tight. Ready to go. It's a triple. And while I have the video here, I'll probably show them how to take the rear wheel off easily since they probably haven't done a roll off rear wheel. So the first thing when you take this wheel off, you want to put the gears all the way down to the lowest gear. So we've got it switched all the way down to one because otherwise you can just, uh, it makes it hard to get it lined back up to put back on this little gear shifter box back here. So the next thing I'm going to do is just take off this little gear shifter box. And that's just finger tight. You just spin this out. If it's gotten too tight, you can put a penny in there to break it loose. But you just spin that out and pull this guy straight off. So that's off. <clears throat> now we can take the wheel out, except we have to release the brakes. <laughs> And we can, we can just kind of hold them together and pull this out like this, which is pretty easy to do. But since you have a uh, triple with one of these guys, it's even easier just to do this. This releases the rear brakes. So now they're completely released. Now you can easily just do that. They're completely released. Pop the wheel. You just It's a quick release skewer. Pull it loose. It drops right out. And then uh, take the chain off of the cog there, and the wheel is out of the bicycle. Now, this guy right here is the trick to putting it back together that's different about a roll-off than other bikes. This has to line up with this little knob that's on the frame. So when you put it back together, you basically have to do two things. You have to remember to put the chain back on, which is what I always forget to do, but I usually just put it take it off on the front so it's real easy and just set it on there like that that way you're not fighting the chain tension and then you just come in here and make sure this lever is lined up with that knob as I lift the wheel up into the frame and there it is and then you tighten the skewer back up make sure it's centered in the frame and the way I do that is like this and you can kind of see it's not quite centered this finger is closer than this finger, so I'm going to just loosen the wheel and lift up on it, kind of give it some 
pressure. Yeah, that's better. I still want to set just a little bit more. All right. Okay, that'll work. Now, we got to put this shift box back on. So there's these two little holes line up with these two little pins. This hole and this hole line up with these two pins. So you have to just kind of line those guys up. Where are they at? There they are. And kind of push this guy on until it goes. I'm going to have to snap it on there like that. Well, almost. Come on. I'm going to loosen these barrel adjusters a little bit just to maybe help me get that lined up. There it is, just like that. So that's all the way on. I'm going to tighten this back up. And I can tighten the barrel adjusters. I just gave them like a half a turn each. There you go. Now we have to hook the brake back up by putting that cable right around there. And then we're going to now do this. Hey. After this, we'll pause to help the customer. <laughs> All right, go ahead and pause for a minute there, Mike.